Welcome back to Try Your Hand. Today we will be dabbling in some forage painting. If you don't know, forage painting is when a scene is painted on the fanned edges of a book. Usually that book is plated in gold, like the edge is plated in gold, and that hides the painting from view until you start flipping the pages. Then you can see the painting. So we're going to do that as well today, uh, though we're not going to be gilding the edges because we are not that rich. Uh, we will be painting them black, however. So why don't we get into the supplies? So in your supplies, you should have a watercolor palette, two brushes, one pointed and one flat. Uh, you should also have a book and two clamps. Things that you will have to provide for yourself is a cup of water and a pencil. All right, so why don't we get started now? The first thing that we're going to do is to fan out the pages of our book. This is a little bit harder the bigger your book is, so uh, as you will see, I had some trouble with my book getting the right amount of fanning to happen, because you want all the pages to be evenly fanned in order for you to get like a nicely even image. Um, once you have fanned the book's pages to your desired amount, you want to then uh, take your two clamps and clamp the pages in that position. Now that the book is all clamped up how I want it to be, I then start to sketch out the drawing that I want on the edge of my painting. So for me, what I wanted to do was to write the word read on my book, so I started to sketch out the bubble letters for the word read. Um, you don't have to do this, you could do whatever picture that you want. You could have like geometric shapes or you could have really whatever you want. Um, so I just started to sketch out how I wanted my letters to look. And once I was kind of happy with the way that it looked, I then started to um, erase the lines so that the line, the pencil marks, wouldn't show through the watercolor while I was painting all of my letters. It is a bit hard to paint these letters with the watercolor because we actually don't want a lot of water on our brush while we're painting because we don't want the pages to start warping on us. So what I would do is I would pick my color and I would dip my brush uh, in the water and just take out any excess water and then I would swirl my brush in whatever color it is that I wanted um, and I picked this light blue color and I swirled it around to get as much uh, pigment as I could on the uh, brush and then I would dab a little bit of the excess water off of my brush and then I would start to dab uh, the color onto the edges of my pages where I wanted it to be. So when it came to how I wanted uh, my letters here painted, I kind of wanted them to look a little bit more dimensional. So I picked a color, so in this case the R is blue, and the color that I picked was a kind of like a, a mid blue color, so it wasn't too dark and it wasn't too light. And I kind of used that as like my base color by painting it mostly in a lot of areas. And then I used the darker blue as like a shadow and a lighter blue as like highlights. One of the things that you should keep in mind when painting with watercolors is that um, you can't really go from dark to light all that much. If you want certain areas of your uh, picture to be lighter, you want to leave that area space clear. You can kind of see when I am painting this R that I don't do that, and it didn't quite come out as nice as the other letters. You can see that in the other letters I left little bubbles um, where I wanted the highlights to be empty and then I kind of um, used the lighter color to in those little areas so that you can see that that's like the area that I wanted highlighted. When painting this you do want to do a lot more uh, dabbing motions because your brush is going to be a lot more dry than it would usually be. Um, for example, if you're doing just regular old watercolor painting, you might have like your brush kind of filled with water. 
in order to get like a wash sort of effect. But with this, you don't want that much water on your brush. You want very little water on your brush. So when I decided to shade, I decided where it was that my light source was coming from. So I had decided that my light source was going to be coming from the upper right hand side, which meant that a lot of the places that were going to be shadowed was like the lower left hand side of my letters. So as you can see here, I'm adding a darker blue kind of in those areas to try and make it look a little bit more dimensional, a little bit more like it's a, a 3D object than like a flat 2D object. Again, I forgot to leave those blank spots open for highlights like in the uh, upper right hand uh, corner of my R here, but I do do a better job of showing you how to do that when I do the letter E. I decided on a color, which was pink in this case, and I picked a medium pink, so not a, a pink that's not too light or too dark, and then I started to kind of outline and fill up a lot of that E space, but here, uh, as I was saying before, I left a few areas open for highlights. So it, you can see how in the upper right hand corner of the very top of that E, I left like a little blank bubble. So that's going to be filled up with a little bit of like the white watercolor and it blends out the uh, the edges of where like the pink starts and where like that little like highlight area comes. You can also do this with like a slight like a lighter pink as well that also works super well. So I will then let you continue to watch me paint this E.
So I did the rest of the letters off screen because I figured you already know how to paint the letters if you decide to do this particular design because I showed you uh, two different letters. So when you are done, um, I decided to do a little bit of like a background wash, but really it could have just been left alone and that would have been fine too. So I took off the clamps off of the pages of the book and now what I'm going to be doing is clamping uh, the book together so that the edges are nice and flat so like how a closed book would be so as you can see even though this is supposed to be like a hidden picture you can still see the picture very clearly on the edges there um, the reason for the reason that it does this is because this technique is usually done on books that have like a uh, that gold stuff on the ends and that's the thing that hides the the four edge painting essentially so what we're going to be doing, because we do not have gold, um, is to paint the edges of the books black or any like dark color that will hide any of the other watercolors that you used. I decided on black because I knew for a fact that black was going to cover all these colors. So I take my flat brush and I of course dip that in water, take some of the black, and again we do not want uh, our paintbrush to be filled with water. We want it to be uh, with as little water as possible. So again, I dab my brush in a paper towel or a Kleenex and then I start to brush on the black on the edge of my pages. And I just keep on doing that until the whole thing is covered. So now you are done with your project. Um, in this case, it's the hidden picture is not so hidden, but the reason for that is because on this book, these pages, the edges of them were not all very flat, and that caused some problems. If your book has flat edges, you will not have this problem, and I'll show you towards the end. Uh, one of my test books was with flat edges, and that one turned out really good. Um, but you can still see that when you uh, flip the edges down, you do see the read whole, a whole lot better with all the colors and stuff that are used. So that does turn out pretty cool. And so here I'll show you the flat edge one. See, it's completely black. And then rainbows! It's so much fun! So if your book has flat edges, this will turn out much, much better. Uh, so... I hope to see you next time on the next Try Your Hand. It's going to be DVD Mosaics. So, we'll hope to see you then.